Hi friends! I feel insane to even say this, but Capcom hired me to cosplay Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil Village. In this video, I will show you how I made the full costume and build a set for the photo shoot. Thank you so much Capcom for sponsoring this video. I seriously can't believe it. I have been a huge fan of the Resident Evil series for many years and I already cosplayed Ada Wong from Resident Evil 4. It is a dream come true to make a costume from this world for Capcom and I'm so excited to play the game when it comes out. The new Resident Evil Village takes place several years after the events of Resident Evil 7. The game balances survival horror elements synonymous with the brand, along with combat, exploration, and puzzle solving. This will be the most realistic game in the series. Using advanced tech and Capcom's proprietary RE engine to create a photorealistic world. The village is only the beginning, as multiple horror experiences confront you with unique monsters and environments designed to evoke a constant state of fear. Bring it on, I'm ready. Click this link to learn more about Resident Evil Village today, and be sure to stay until the end of the video for the full cosplay reveal. Now it's time for me to transform into Lady Dimitrescu. Time was of an essence, so I chose easy to get cream white satin for the dress. I was able to use a lot of materials I already had, such as costume jewelry and leather gloves. I created a fitted mock-up for the dress and cut out the outer layer and a lining. Then came the tedious task of sewing all the panels together and attaching the lining to the outer layer. Afterward, I ironed every seam flat. Can't skip this step. Pressing makes all the difference in sewing. A quick fitting test to mark that infamous neckline. Next, I made her little back capelet just by draping my own pattern. I decided to make the capelet in two panels that hook together in the center and would allow me to easily unzip the dress in the back. Now came the funnest part, draping Our Lady's rouged front panel. I opted to make this piece separate from the dress so I could really control the fabric. As you can see, I went for a pleated look because that is to my personal taste. Once I was happy with the pleats, I pinned a thin ribbon to the pleated line to keep them in place. Then I simply sew down the pleats. They're not going anywhere now. Next, I encased the raw edge of the front panel in satin in a version of homemade bias tape. Lots of ironing and careful stitching in the ditch to get that seamless look. From here on, there was a lot of hand sewing. I pinned the pleated front panel to the dress, making sure it lined up with the neckline. Then I spent a few hours hand stitching the panel onto the dress using blind stitches that could not be seen from the outside. Finally, it came down to the finishing touches. I finished the bottom hem of the dress as neatly as I could. I decided to leave the lining free hanging from the outer layer at the bottom. I also hand sewed little pearl buttons to the sleeves. The dress for Lady Dimitrescu is finished! Now a quick look at the wig styling. I got a nice lace front base wig and curled it by heating up sections then rolling them up. The curls form while the fibers cool down, so when I unrolled them after a few minutes, the curl stayed in place. A little hairspray and my wig was done. I got super lucky with the jewelry because I already had a few costume necklaces that I could Frankenstein together into her necklace. One even came with matching pearl earrings. I used O-rings and two pairs of pliers to connect whatever segments I wanted.
I think the resulting necklace is really pretty. I made her rose brooch by gluing three fabric roses together on a backing and adding a couple of pinbacks. As for Lady Dimitra's giant hat, I got lucky again because I already owned a giant oversized beach hat. Never got to go on the intended trip, but it did make me think that I was meant to cosplay this character. <laughs> I simply wrapped some black chiffon around the brim and hand stitched it down. Easy peasy. That marks all of her costume components, but of course I saw the village trailer and I really wanted to make her bladed glove. So here we go. For this project, I enlisted Brian's help and we worked on the patio because it was a sunny spring day. 2mm EVA foam and lightweight aluminum rods, oversized leather gloves, and copper plumbing joints as finger caps. I cut the aluminum rods to length and strips of EVA foam which then I folded around the aluminum. A little heat allowed me to shape the foam. Then I applied barge cement glue to the foam and pressed the aluminum in. This is the part where I smush the foam together as smoothly as possible and try not to leave any fingernail marks. It's also why we are working outside because barge cement is no fun to breathe in. Once the pieces were smooth, I drew out a blade shape. Using a sharp X-Acto knife, I cut out the blade shape. Always make sure to label every piece. Then it was time to sand down each blade to give it more shape and an edge. Once the pieces look like blades, it was time to attach them to the finger caps. You can see a bit of aluminum sticking out at the end. This will connect to the copper piece. Brian mixed up epoxy sculpt, which is a clay-like compound that hardens like stone in 24 hours. He smushed some into the copper piece and fitted snug onto my finger, then we stuck in the aluminum rod. We did this with all five fingers, using epoxy sculpt to fill the negative space and ensuring a snug fit. Then we left the blades alone overnight. The next day, it was time to paint them. As always, we sealed the foam with Plasti Dip first. I have to say, Brian's vice-on-vice -vice paint contraption is pretty ingenious. I airbrushed a black base layer, then went in with a mix of silver and gunmetal paints for a gradient effect. Then I finished off with a clear coat. I extended the finger caps with strips of warbla. These gave my fingers more of a grip on the blades. Be sure to wear gloves when heating up warbla, and remember that it can also be sanded smoother. Now the oversized glove makes sense because the entire contraption has to be shoved through the fingers. I opened the seams at the top and slid the blades through, then I hand sewed them shut again. The fit is snug and not uncomfortable, and I can articulate my fingers well. The costume is done! enjoyed watching this costume build and cosplay transformation. I love how much the internet has embraced Lady Dimitrescu and I've seen so many amazing cosplays of her. It was a blast to make the costume, especially the hand blades, and create a photo set evocative of her castle. I did my best and I'm so happy to be a part of the hype. 
Thanks again, Capcom, for giving me this opportunity. Everyone, please check out the new Resident Evil Village game. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, Yaya Cosplay. Let me know in the comments which your favorite Resident Evil game is. I'd love to know. Videos like these take a long time to make, so I really appreciate your support. Until next time, happy crafting!